Bruce. Good morning, Foster. Forgot your name for a second. Just no, I did. I just would have called. I would have called you Todd or Josh. <laughs> but there's only one Bruce, and that would be you, sir. So, welcome to uh, the Art of Fire, uh, and we're going to be making goblet. Yeah, last week when we were on our FaceTime, a couple of uh, just a couple of bottles to make drinking glasses, and we tried to make a goblet, but unfortunately it was a simple little pot that started to fight, and it broke. So since we have a short time today to try and make a piece, we're going to give it another go. So we'll see how successful we are today. All right. So without further ado, then. Okay, so Bruce has got some, uh, got a punny pipe that he's been heating up in the uh, pipe warmer. He's going to get a gather of glass on the end of the pipe. Come over to the marvering table, cool it, shape it on the marvering table, which is a steel table <clears throat> with the name of Marver, M-A-R-V-E-R, which is French for marble. Because before, before steel was developed, the glass blowers for 2,000 years utilized marble slabs to cool and shape the glass. This ultimately, in a blown vessel, helps the bubble enter evenly distributed into the glass. So, Bruce took that bit of clear glass. He's going to reach down into the annealing or tempering oven, running at a temperature of 900 degrees Fahrenheit, pick up the bottle on the end of the putty, and he's gonna come back And this is a rolling rock bottle. He's going to go ahead and subject that to the heat of the to the heat of the glory hole, running at a temperature of 2,300 degrees. Good morning, you all. And I see Joanna's with us, and some of these other folks. So he has to be able to get enough heat into the into the bottle top that the mouth can be opened up Josh is using the jacks to create a neckline or a decreased diameter on the bottle that will be taken off taken off the bottle attached to the pontal iron, to another pontal iron that Bruce is preparing. And this will ultimately be the bottom. I'm sorry, you're gonna... Okay, for those of you who watched last week, we're changing this up just a little bit this week. We got, a, we got a little bit wide on the putty contact on the bottom of this bottle. Okay. So it would have presented a little difficulty taking it off. Okay. So we're going to take the neck of that bottle off, and that's going to form the stem of a little goblet that we might call it. And then as soon as we get done with that, we'll pick up another bottle for the bottom. Okay. Todd has made a honey. that he's presented to Josh. He's taken that piece So we're going to pick up another bottle and start this process 
over again in a similar manner in the way that we started this once again. So, coming back over to the annealing oven, Bruce has got the punny, punny pipe. He's picking up. He's picking up the, another bottle. No, not quite. This is one of the super clear ones. It's really, it's super clear, so it's hard to see. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we need to drive more heat into the clear glass on the pony. Morning, Joanna. Hi, Lynn Kranicki. We don't do this a lot. <laughs> hey, this is all fun. As yep. Bruce just indicated, we don't do this a lot, but We learn as we go along. That's right, Joanna. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Okay, we're going to pick this bottle up again. We're going to attempt to pick up the bottle again, which Bruce did get this time. We're going to go ahead and heat it up in the glory hall. Nice job, nice job, Bruce. All right, now we're heating up the top of the bottle. In the glory hall, again, the glory hall is 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit and is used strictly for reheating purposes for those of you who are not familiar with the Glory Hall. It's just a can of heat. So, Bruce is gonna take this and begin to open up the mouth of the bottle, or he's gonna close down, making an indentation or a neckline. You want me to knock this off for you, Bruce? Uh, yeah. No, okay. I'm actually going to take that, Bruce. What's that? I'm going to take that top. You're going to take this top? Yeah. Oh, you're going to put it on that one? Yeah. Okay. We're going to take the two tops and join them together for the foot of this footed beer mug. Beer glass. Excuse me, not beer mug, but beer glass. Josh has the first foot on his punny. Can you heat the lip in that? Yeah, I'm gonna cut that down a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, so we have Steve Ellis. Good afternoon from the UK. Should be about uh, 4.30 come five o'clock, Mr. Ellis. All right. They're going to put these two together, join these two together. The glass has a similar coefficient of expansion. Good morning, Brian. It's good to see you folks this weekend. There we go. All right. Okay, so we took the top. Ah. Okay. There's one more in there. Okay, so the bottle broke. This is what happened. From the amount of time it took us to get it uh, off and assembled, so. Correct. So, all right, so we're going to put this aside and we'll work on picking up another bottle. So, third time's a charm. And that's why we put in those extra bottles to deal with situations 
such as this. You need a step down plenty put up. Looking for an extra one? Okay. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, so Bruce is taking that glass on the end of the punny pipe, which we refer to as a step down. It's a little thicker up towards the, up towards where we actually handle the pipe. Makes it a little easier for the older guys to handle the uh, larger diameter. And he's driving heat into the end of this glass on the end of the punny so that it, he can pick up the beer bottle. Now the beer bottle has a different glass consistency or cons coefficient of expansion. It cools more quickly than does our clear glass. All right, so Bruce has done a great job picking up the bottle on the end of the punny. Now he's going to subject the bottle to the glory hole again, which once again is a furnace that's used strictly for reheating purposes. And after he's driven enough initial heat into the bottle, he'll come over to the bench, use his jacks to open up the mouth, and open up the mouth just fractionally, make a decreased diameter at the edge, or at the end of the larger diameter. So this will be the cup. You can see the decreased diameter, or what we, some, what we refer to as a neckline. This is where the top of the bottle will be taken off. And in this instance, are we going to discard the top of this bottle? What's that? Are we going to discard the yeah. top of this yeah, bottle? We'll discard the top of this one. Okay. Now while Bruce is working on that, Josh has the foot, what will be the foot that will be ultimately be attached to the top or to the to the bottle that Bruce has here. Okay. Excellent. So you might mention, Foster, that we keep this uh, the discard separate from our regular glass because this glass is incompatible with the glass we normally melt. That's correct. I was talking about the uh, difference in the uh, coefficient of expansion. Thank you for mentioning that, Bruce. Uh, if the, we melted this in with our regular glass, we would make something that would probably shatter. Yeah. So the two bodies, what Bruce was saying was that the two bodies would probably shatter and that's because the uh, the chemistry or the formulas of the two different glasses are different enough that they would not hold together so that has to be taken into account a lot of you're watching the artistry of the glass. You're not so concerned with the chemistry of the glass. But this is, the chemistry of the glass is important to be able to work the glass. Okay, 
We're just going to open up this bottle some more. And this does have an enamel label on the bottle. If it were not an enamel if that were not an enamel label on the bottom, on the bottle, it would have burned off quite quite a while ago. You want a paddle, Bruce? Okay. All right. We're taking our time with the heat because this is our last bottle. Yep. And I don't want this to get too cold at the vent. So I need to open it a little bit more. We're going to use the vent holder. Might not too much out of it. Yeah. So this is called the fin mold here. You can see the profile. The six, what is that? One, two, three blades either side of the uh, six blades either side of the central core. Bruce is going to take this glass. He's going to open it up a little bit more and then he'll be putting it over the fin mold so that it gets panels, if you will. So I think he's just about ready. He's going to put it on the floor. He's heating this up. He's going to bring this out in just a moment. Put it over the fin mold to give the panels. And then we'll take it to the next step. <clears throat> where it will be puntied from the inside of the glass. Okay. You can see how the glass is stretching over those fins, and you can see that it has the panels that have been introduced to it. Now, in just a moment, we're going to take a smaller putty stick it to the inside of the glass so that it comes away from the from the putty that he has been using at this point and then Josh will take the footed portion that we shared with you earlier and bring the two together okay Todd has the putty Gonna bring it in. It went too hot last week, so I'm just giving it a second. We're gonna touch on the inside. Put a little bit of water there. And then Todd has taken the piece to the glory hole. Okay. Last week we got it all a little too hot. Yeah. We got through the construction process, but then we couldn't get it off of this puck. Now yeah. you can see how this glass is moving on the end of that pipe, and because the puckies inside the glass, it makes it a little bit awkward, and it's kind of opposite to what a glass blower is used to doing as far as recentering the glass. So right now I'm just keeping a little bit of heat in it, hopefully to keep it cracking. But you can tell how very hot the connection between the punty and the bottle, uh, the bottom of the glass is. So a couple of real brief repeats. You can see that motion is indicative of heat. In fact, it reminds me of a really great saying: hot glass moves. Old glass dome. Good afternoon, Angel from Scotland. Nice to have you with us this morning on the East Coast in the U.S. Why don't you put that on this one? I'm sorry, what? Why don't you put that one on this one? Okay. So, are you going to come down here? 
pretty good. Okay? Yep. I'm pretty hot. That's good. I'm the only one that gets to say that though. <laughs> Even if my wife doesn't agree. Okay, now they've joined the two pieces together. We're going to try this once again. This is no easy feat, or beer glass for that matter. Don't mind the feat. That would be F-E-A-T. This is really pushing the glass blowers to their limits. If we did this all day every day it wouldn't be that much of a problem but since we don't this is always a nice challenge here we're going to try this again All right, good. So we got the two pieces joined together. Josh has got it now, and he's using another glory hole, which is the same size as the glory hole that Bruce was using. It's just at a different working station. Joanna, yes, it is. It's incredibly tricky. So, there we go. That's a terrific double stemmed <laughs> gob beer glass. Terrific. Yes. Thank you, Angel. It is nice work. And Valerie, yes, success. Third time's a try, and that worked, has worked out incredibly well. Bruce, Todd. Josh, what a terrific job, you guys. Now we're going to go ahead and take this off into the annealing oven. All right, terrific, guys. Nice job. Let's everybody give them a hand. Hey, very nice. Good for you. That's terrific. So, uh, that was very nice. We're in about uh, six minutes on uh, Facebook Live, and we'll be doing a full two-hour demonstration. Good. All right. Now, how do I turn this one? How do you off? turn it off? You hit the X. X. Oh, okay. Very good. And okay. Yeah. There you go. 